Megan's Delusion selling Echo tote back for $2,000? Harry's new best friend forever and uh, the royal rota trying to gaslight Catherine into revealing details about her recovery. This and more on tonight's show. Hello, welcome back, my royal rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the royal rogue. And now we know why Harry was recording that Diana Legacy Award from... Uh, well, not Montecito office. He was instead at Aspen on a ski trip with Chris Jenner's boyfriend, Corey Gamble. Now, wasn't Harry the one who keeps touting unconscious bias? The one who keeps taunting that he was going to fix the mistakes of his pa. And he was going to be the father that he never had. And he's going to fix all that generational trauma by being the best father he can be. Was all that hypocrisy? Because once again, I don't know how many times has he been on a trip away from his house, away, away from his family, away from his children. And it's sad. I mean, it's, it's not like I care, but it's sad nonetheless. Because you might remember his words right before Archie was born. As someone who is about to become a father, I'm acutely aware of our shared responsibility to make this world more resilient and its inhabitants more accountable for the next generation. He said to the crowd, the only way to see real progress is not by chance, it's by change. Well, my best guess is that Harry is trying to make his own kids more resilient to the idea that he's not going to be around the house that often because... He's got better things to do, apparently. And this is not something that I am saying. This is something that we have seen, not from the start of the year, but from quite some time ago. You, you might remember that one year ago, uh, he gave this interview on how uh, Prince Harry makes time for self-care while raising son Archie and daughter Lilibet. Yeah, this is laughable. And, and he said this, quote, He calls self-help the first thing that drops away as a parent. And he began saying, like, I either walk out, take the dog for a walk, get out in nature, maybe meditate. He left out going on ski trips with people that we have never seen him going out with. Because, okay, I, I can give him the benefit of the doubt playing polo with Nacho. That is one thing. That is something that he has done all the time since many years ago. And from a body language and behavior perspective, remember that I have always told you that you have to observe and analyze people's behavior. And if you see a change, then that's the thing. But in the case of Nacho, we have seen Harry hanging out with him playing polo for, from a long time ago. But who are these people he is hanging out with? It's not that I'm judging at all. He, he can do with his life whatever he wants. But it, it becomes more and more obvious that he's trying to run away from something. That he's not the homely father that he has been proclaiming to the world. That That is just not happening. That he's uh, waking up to the harsh reality that he has isolated himself from family and friends. To the point that he has way less freedom and way more responsibilities than when he was just a prince from the royal family. But no, he, he doesn't seem to have any intent on acting upon those responsibilities or all that he has said about it in the past. Could this be some kind of middle age crisis? Well, who knows? And the first products have been popping up on a shopping website with the name of Megan's brand, American Riviera Orchard, Arrow for short. And I'm sure that Megan was aiming for some kind of luxury brand to position herself as a luxury influencer. That is the only way that I can explain this, if there is any explanation to this. Because among the products that people could get a glimpse of was a pretty common tote bag. The one that you use for plain old groceries shopping for $2,000. Now, this could be a mistake, of course. This, this could be a typo or, or something. But don't you tell me that it's not strange for everything that has happened with this 
brand lunch that uh, that I'm about to explain why it is half baked and why I believe that Megan is not going to follow up with this brand. But since we are so used to Megan being outrageous for all the wrong reasons, I would not be surprised about this either. It's crazy as it gets, but what else could you expect from the Duchess of Sausages? Now, I'm going to try to make sense of what is Megan trying to do here and no. It, it is not a sound strategy because, for starters, she has launched the whole thing before she got clearance from the trademark. She requested the trademark, uh, the copyright, but it has not been approved yet. So right out of the gate, it will be quite embarrassing if her request for trademark was rejected or delayed in any way. That's one thing. The second thing is launching a shop without any products, just a brand. That could be a good idea in some instances, but precisely in this one is not. Let's me, let me explain. For example, if you are a small to medium-sized creator, such as yours truly, let's say that I want to launch uh, some kind of line of tote bags, but I need to invest on those tote bags first, and I don't know if you will be interested. I gauge interest first by announcing that I'm thinking of creating a tote bag line. I gauge the interest, and if I can measure that you're actually interested in a Royal Road tote bag, then I will actually launch the tote bag. Does that make sense? I really don't move on with the product itself unless I have gauged the intention of my audience of actually purchasing the product. Again, this can only be pulled off by small to medium creators because what happens with people like Megan? Well, Megan, whether we like it or not, she's a global brand. Infamous, for sure but she's a global brand. We cannot take that away from her. And precisely for that, it has been quite embarrassing that 48 hours later, she hasn't even reached half a million followers. But bear with me with this. I have thought that maybe Megan is only gauging interest, that this at some point can go the way of 40 by 40, that she will only announce something, but then don't follow up on the actual offering. And why would she do that, you might ask? Well, contrary to what she wants everyone to believe, she, she doesn't have that much attention to detail after all, because what she wanted to do was to upstage the Diana Legacy Awards. That's it. She rushed into something that was meant to launch for, my guess is summer, and she said, oh, whatever, I'm, I'm going to do it right away because... Kate is having all the attention in the entire world, and you can imagine that Megan had run out of plates to smash in Montecito. She needed to do something about it, and South by Southwest did not even make a dent on global search about her, because nobody cares about those woke projects. So she had this half-baked pie in the oven, and she decided to just release it at once. Again, some of my rogues have asked me, and this is another clue that this is a half-baked project. Some of my rogues have asked me, what does it mean that I can tag my memes on her Instagram account? How does it work? And this is a feature that people can tag their Instagram posts with another account. For example, if you are drinking some brand of soda, you tag the brand of that soda's Instagram account in your photo. So it's common sense if you have a global shop or a brand that is going to attract quite some attention that you lock the ability of third parties to tag themselves with your brand because it's a very bad look if you go to the tag section of your Instagram and you see, uh, well, let's say images and memes and messages that are detrimental to your reputation and don't look good at all. You have to manually approve say tagging and they are meant to someone for someone to who actually buys the products or the jellies or the spread or whatever and they want to tag their experience with the brand but the brand must have control over that so that's further proof that this was rushed and half-baked 
and there's a high possibility that Megan is not going to follow up on said shop. Now, the crazy products were found thanks to rogues who discover that there is one American Riviera or Charles shop at Shopify. Shopify is a platform where you can set up your own shop. I would want to say that this is not really Megan because the domain, the name of the site is not the official site that she launched. But being this also absolutely amateur, I would not be surprised that Megan reserved the American Riviera or charts at Shopify and did not really connect that to her main website. So uh, there is no way of knowing if this is an official website or there is, or this is one of the countless copycats that have popped up all over Instagram and the internet. That's why when you look for American Riviera or charts on Instagram, sometimes you see that follower account has dropped to 90 or 1,000 or something like that because you are looking at copycat accounts. Again, you prevent all this by making a proper launch and having actual products and have actual reviews of your products on launch day. <sighs> yeah, not much attention to detail after all. And this is what I tell you that I despise uh, every single instance of the Royal Rota thanks to things like this. Uh, Kate could address health mystery at public engagement, say friends. This is a, an, an outright lie and it's putting more pressure on Catherine and William who have been requesting privacy since forever and it has not been respected in any way. Shaken by the feeding frenzy around a family photo, the Prince of, of Wales is determined to protect his bubble. That bubble, in quotation marks, is a mockery of Catherine's privacy. Uh, they are at their most open when out interacting with members of the public, and I can see a world in which the princess might discuss her recovery uh, out on engagements if she was going to do it. That's how she would do it. Uh, they will want to be clear and more open, but they'll do it when they feel ready. I would expect that to be her instinct and it will be her call. They're not going to be rushed. I don't like the fact that they are implying that Catherine is going to discuss the surgery or her recovery at some point. If something is for certain, we don't need that explanation. This is not a mystery to us. This is our way of respecting Catherine's privacy. But you know that these outlets are going to keep using that word mystery under the guise that Catherine at some point considered or promised or thought about revealing details, which is completely untrue. And it seriously reminds me of all those instances when a person gaslights another. Oh, it's because you told me at some point that you were going to be candid about this, that you were going to reveal the details when you didn't. They try to retcon your memories of the event. You ask them for privacy, just leave you alone. And they claim that at some point in one conversation, you say that, oh, I'm going to spoil the, uh, spill the beans. Why don't you do that now? Why are you backtracking? They are making up things. That's what the Royal Rota is doing in this case, forming a supposed promise that Catherine will be open about this in the future. But, Rogis, I would love to know, what do you think about this in the comments? My name is Jesus Enrique Rosa, I'm the Royal Rogue, and remember, much love and bliss.